Hi, welcome to WiseCat. Okay, uh, Happy New Year. Been a while since I've done a video, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, sorry. Uh, but anyway, we've got a good one here for super beginners. So uh, I got a comment the other day on one of my videos that said, uh, I understand all the, what you say, but I'm not sure what page program you're writing the commands. So this comment seems to be talking about the command line terminal, which is this thing, shiny thing uh, hanging out behind me. So I've currently got HTOP running in there. If I uh, exit that, I've got a command line where I can write in commands. And if you type in random stuff, it says command not found, go figure. Uh, but anyway, the question is, where am I writing this? So this is a terminal program. Um, but the terminal commands, if you want to actually write them on a server, you actually have to have these in, uh, you have to have your server uh, connected first. So how do you get the connect in, server connected first? This is why I actually quite love this question. Um, because I encountered this very same question about 10 years ago or so when I started uh, doing the server admin things, um, maybe longer than 10 years ago, but I don't want to divulge my age too much. Uh, but anyway, uh, the thing is that this question, I remember asking it and saying, where do I enter the commands in the terminal? Well, where's the terminal? Well, your computer should have a terminal. Yep. It's not a good enough explanation. So let me explain a, in a little bit more detail. Now, in order to answer this question, we actually have to talk about a few companies and I'm gonna be introducing a couple of companies very soon um, because the companies, well, you need a place to put your, uh, your server. You, you need a server and VPSs are a really good way of getting started in the easiest way possible. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do now is um, just explain about the server, how to set one up, and getting you from zero, zip zilch zero, to having this command line prompt in front of you. So that's the goal of this video, let's, let's go. Okay, so uh, I am going to switch the scene around. So go back to my usual lazing about down in the corner. So, whoa, haha. -ha. And you can see here's the first uh, page of the first um, the first service that we're looking at. So this one here is called DigitalOcean. Now DigitalOcean is a fantastic company. Um, I say that because in particular, they seem to be really good, uh, socially responsible. During the COVID pandemic, I saw with my own eyes that DigitalOcean was sponsoring uh, NPOs and NGOs and, and schools and helping people who were trying to come to terms with the COVID pandemic and everything. Really, really deep respect for them. Um, the perhaps actually the the most famous of the VPS offerers uh, offering companies is Amazon AWS, but they're actually uh, very very complex to use. Uh, AWS in particular is, and that's one of the things where DigitalOcean really comes you know comes good on this promise that they've got on their front page. The cloud is complex. We make it simple. Not only does DigitalOcean uh, offer an awesome package uh, in terms of uh, the uh, their VPS offerings, but they also have a heck of a lot of really, really high quality community documentation. So if you're lost for something and you're Googling how to do something and you see a article that is written by DigitalOcean, there's a really good chance that your answer is going to be um, totally answered. If you follow the, the uh, articles written uh, that are published by uh, DigitalOcean. So they've got a really good uh, documentation and support and things like that. Um, so anyway, they uh, also their pricing, uh, all three of the companies that I'm going to be introducing you to, uh, they have very good dropling, uh, like droplets, they call it you know DigitalOcean droplets. They got a good metaphor thing happening there. Um, 
five bucks a month. And when they say five bucks a month, they mean five bucks a month. Five US dollars per month is what one of these VPSs costs. Right, that's the low end one. Um, they also do, all these companies do things like, you know, DN, uh, DNS monitor, um, management. So you can actually run, you can um, make, uh, uh, put in the A records and the DKIM records and things like that. The, the DNS records that you need to add for your domain name, uh, whatever you are.com, wisecat.net in my case. And uh, you can manage that from inside the same interface where you're managing the servers, which is incredibly convenient to be able to do all of that in one place. So they have their own name servers and that's actually very, very useful for them. The next company I would introduce is Vulture. And Vulture is another one that's incredibly fast. Uh, they, I think Vulture was one of the first ones that I saw that actually started using NVMe storage. So really, really fast disk storage. Uh, they've got their cloud compute thing, and uh, if we view pricing, let's see. You can see that it's pretty much the same same prices. Um, again, the one t one gigabyte uh, offering, same comparable to DigitalOcean, is five bucks. These two dollar fifty ones, I think, are only in certain locations. I'm not exactly sure about those, um, but essentially you probably if you're st if you're trying to serve something like Moodle you're going to want at least one of these one gigabyte ones I think these half a gigabyte RAM seems a bit low um, you, you could probably get away with it if let's say you're the only person using it but if so you could install it locally on your own computer and that would probably work it anyway the offerings are there and I'm sure there's a use case for them but uh, anyway, um, yeah, Vulture is another option. Same same deal, essentially. But the third one I'd like to introduce as well is Linode. And Linode is one of the ones that I use the most. And the reason I use uh, Linode perhaps the most, okay, uh, their API is awesome. Well, they've all got APIs and everything. But Linode has one killer feature that I think is um, incredibly useful for my particular use case scenario. And that is that all three of these platforms, um, DigitalOcean, Vulture, and Linode will allow you to scale up. So if you uh, you select the one gigabyte server, and then you find, oh, the server's struggling, it's it's not strong enough, I need, to, I need more power, more power, then you scale it up. And boom, you've got, you've got more power then. And having more power is great, except for if that power that you need is just for one weekend. So in my case, uh, this, this commonly happens when, for example, I'm hosting a conference and I'm hosting it on, say, Big Blue Button. So I fire up some Big Blue Button servers and I make them nice and big, fat Big Blue Button servers so that there is plenty of bandwidth, plenty of uh, CPU power, plenty of them fall over. But after the conference is over, there may be a couple of discussions or something, but nothing terribly heavy. So that's a lot of horsepower that's going to waste. Linode allows me to downsize that without actually having to re reinstall the server. So the recordings can be served, um, because it's still a big blue button server, the recordings can be served directly without me having to actually move them, migrate them to another server or something like that. And I can take my time and I can relax. So that's one sort of use case scenario where, okay, you've got a server that's going to be under a really high stress for a short period of time, and then you can throttle it back again and uh, save those resources. Linode is really easy for going up and down like that. So how do we do it? So first of all, you're going to need a user account on one of these. And here's where the good news is. A lot of these have, um, a lot of these things like Linode has, you know, 100 bucks credit active. Now, the good thing about all of these companies are that they generally offer you $100 of free credit if, you know, for 60 days. 60 days, you can try it out with up to 100 bucks is free. And that's fantastic because that means that you can play with essentially a no risk scenario. As long as you delete the servers after you're done with them, you will not be charged beyond um, that 100 bucks for the first 60 days. 
thereafter, you can, um, if you keep going with it, uh, then you will start paying at the $5 a month or whatever you the size service you have running. So I'm going to actually leave some links in the description below that are my referral links. Now, what that means is, although I'm not getting paid to use them, you click on those and sign up for either DigitalOcean, Vulture, or Linode. Um, I'll try to put all three in there. You get a hundred bucks or uh, whatever is actually on offer. I'll describe what's offered as well. And if you if you are actually satisfied with it and keep using it after uh, the 60 days is over, and if you keep becoming a paying customer and pay Linode up to something like $20 or something, they give me a kickback. Something like, you know, 20 bucks of free credit might, comes my way. That, that'd be nice, so um, cool. Win-win, uh, basically. Anyway, so today I'm going to demonstrate um, building the... Uh, the thing with Linode. So building a site from zero to go. So the first thing is that you would sign up and to sign up, you're going to need a credit card. And if you don't want to send, if you don't want to actually have me getting any kickbacks or something, you can actually do it yourself through, uh, there seems to be a hundred dollar credit active sign up. You probably don't even need my referral link with Linode. You can just click sign up, but, uh, <laughs> okay as you like. Anyway, uh, once you've signed in, you'll see something like this page where this is, you know, sort of the dashboard. Linode, I think, yeah, dashboard is, yeah. Anyway, I in the left-hand side, you've got all the access to your, your panels, like your domains, and you've got uh, Linodes, etc., etc., and you can add all these sorts of things. So I've got one domain set up in this account, Hot fun down under down dot fun. Yay, why not? Hot fun down under. And uh, I have a Linode here. Um, Linodes, this is what Linode calls its VPS service, are Linodes. So if you want to create a Linode, you just click on create a Linode. So now we're actually creating a server. And this is actually a lot simpler than you might imagine. So I'm going to build a server. I'm going to build it on, say, Debian 11. Why not? The latest and greatest of Debian stuff. Um, Debian's a pretty cool uh, OS to use. And the region I'm going to use, I'm going to use Tokyo. So you get to choose where the server is actually going to be. Now down here, um, I'm going to use a shared CPU instance because they're cheaper. And I'm going to go for the cheapest one available, which is the Nanode 1 gigabyte version. And uh, later on, I'll probably actually show you how to uh, up, upgrade this one. And I might break out, I'll break this video into, a, this tutorial into a couple of different videos. Anyway, I'll put them in a playlist or something. Sorry, I didn't really think this through so much before <laughs> I started recording. Anyway, uh, you go nano there, um, further on down. Now down here, you've got to specify a label. This is what you're calling the uh, the Linode so that you can see it inside of here. So I'm just going to call it, um, hot fun server. It is hot. It is fun. Well, hopefully it's not running too hot. We want it to run. Yeah. But anyway, um, yeah. Geeky joke. Uh, here we go. So here, uh, root password. Uh, let me see. What should I do as a root password? Uh, kangaroo steak <laughs> kangaroo and steak not necessarily uh, room meat whatever uh let's see five one seven whatever this is going to be deleted before it's uh visible anyway so anyway kangaroo steak five one seven why not why five one seven i don't know uh down below here you can add an ssh key now, an SSH key is a method of um, accessing the server, and this is a very useful thing to do. Because when you are accessing the server for the first time, for example, if you have an SSH key previously in here, then you don't actually have to um, a, enter a password or something like that when you first SSH into the server. Now, I know in beginner world, that's going to be tricky. So we're not actually going to set that up 
in this particular tutorial. I might do another one on SSH later, but what we're going to do is actually use Linode's built-in, um, here's how you log in to, um, it, it, <laughs> we'll get there. Okay, so anyway, uh, you can also set it for backups, uh, $2 a month, and for example, private IP, which is great if you want to have you know multiple Linux nodes, and you want to have them talk to each other over a private uh, network rather than something that is facing the rest of the internet. So that's actually pretty useful if you're going to do something like have the Moodle uh, PHP on one server and the MySQL backend on a separate server. So that can be, there is a use for private IP. But if you're doing the small ones, small scale stuff, you don't need that. And you don't really need backups, but if you are making something that you want to actually keep, then doing that is easy. And then that's basically it. The root password is one that you're going to remember because Kangaroo Stake 517 will be needed when we log in as root. And we can click Create Linode, and that is now deploying the server. Now, the server is not currently switched on, but charging for this server has already commenced at you know something like 0 0.7 cents per hour or something like that. It will max out at, you know, $5 for one month. And that's all I can possibly pay for this one unless I change it. Now it's running. Now I can shut this off as well. I have different options, shut it down or reboot. These don't affect me paying it. Now here's a, sort of an important point. The only way to stop paying for this server is to destroy it or, well, delete it. In some of the, uh, in DigitalOcean or something, it might be destroyed. But anyway, delete, destroy, you get rid of it. That's the only way to stop paying for them, right? So as long as you it, it exists, you're using it. Okay, so let's log into it and get our terminal actually happening. Now, I have not actually done this. I'm wondering if I might be blocking this. Yeah, let's try it. So the simplest way I remember, and I never actually use this, so I don't know if this is going to work. This could be a good blooper rule, real time. Launch Lish console. Okay. Hey, look at that. That worked. All right. So um, some things have happened there, and now we've got a login prompt here. Now, localhost login, because we don't actually have... Uh, SSH or something, but we can actually do this in this uh, particular Lish console. This allows us to, it, it's like we're logging directly into the machine. But there's your, there's your, um, your command line prompt. The prompt is currently asking us to log in, so we'll log in as root. And the password, if you remember, was kangaroo stake. Uh, 517, I think he said. <laughs> okay. Uh, Logging in, great. Whoa, 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 whoa. It wasn't Kangaroo State 517? Um, uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, what do you do in that time? Okay, in those times, what you can do is you can reinstall the server. Um, but typically what you can do is just go here to settings and set a new root password. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here and I'm just going to say uh, kangaroo. Okay, let's see. Did I spell kangaroo correctly? Let's look. Let's view it. Kangaroo. Okay, great. Oh, it's too weak. Um, kangaroo 517. Fair. No, still not good enough. Um, let's add a few hashtags under the, after that. Oh, I hit 617. Is that what I did before? Oh, Linode must be powered down first. Okay, so let's power it off. Okay, switch it off. Power it off. This is how you realize, this is how you know that I never edit videos because, um, you're going to see this in all of its terrible glory, and I don't know what I did. Okay, so now it's powered down, so now I can go kangaroo 617, hash, hash, hash. Boom, that's the Linode password changed successfully. Great, now let's power it back on. Power it on. The hot fun server. 
Hoppity hop. Kangaroo 617 hash hash hash. All right, it's coming up. It's running. Launch Lish console. There's our console. Oh, and you can see the finishing up of that was the finish of it booting up actually, right there. Okay, so, uh, hello, Lish root kangaroo 617 hash 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 let's see and i'm in okay so you can see here it says root at localhost so this is a sort of a default thing in uh, debian so the root user is the god user can do anything and the local host refers to local to that machine. So local to that server. That's where I am. Um, this is different to if you're uh, going in via a terminal. And you can see that my current computer that I'm using right now is called Mammoth. And I am Adam. And where am I logged in? At Mammoth. So I'm logged in on this computer here. Okay, so... Uh, what if I were to use this terminal, this command prompt to SSH into the server, then this Adam at Mammoth prompt would change to Adam at um, a something else. It would change to Adam, you know, maybe root at such and such or something like that. Um, just a sec, actually. Okay, I just gave that a little bit of thought, and I think if I actually go to Wisecat, now I actually have set my um, my server logins are all aliases, so if I, on my machine Mammoth, if I type in Wisecat, it will log me into the Wisecat server, and that's where I'm getting my terminal uh, thing. So this is terminal now, currently Adam at Mammoth, it's running locally on this computer that I'm using right now that I have sitting in front of me, but when I use Wisecat, now instead of Adam at Mammoth, I have logged into this other machine, and now it is Adam at Wisecat. Now that's actually a completely different machine. That's a different machine. The first one, this is my, my desktop computer, and this is a server where I'm at. So this prompt is telling you what user you're using it as, and where where in the world you are in terms of which, which server you're actually logged into or which host you're logged into more accurately. So if I do say sudo uh, su switch user, now now that'll switch the user across to root, right? So if without an argument, um, I can switch user. It's going to say enter my password because I'm using sudo. And if I don't get any typos, <laughs> if you do get typos, then um, uh, yeah, there it is. And now you can see that I've switched user. So first I was switching my location from Adam at Mammoth to login as Adam at Wisecat. And now I'm logged in as root at Wisecat. Mm -hmm. If I uh, log out from that, control D. Now I'm Adam at Wisecat again. If I control D out of that, I'm Adam at Mammoth again. And this is the IP address for um, the Wisecat server. And if I log out of that, then the whole window closes because that's, that's what we're out. So here, now I've got my command line prompt up here. And so I can start doing stuff. And so one of the first things that I'd probably want to do is um, apt update and whoop, apt upgrade i'll add a dash y there so it won't ask me the question but this will you know uh, first thing to do update the software make sure that your server software is the latest and greatest it's got all the patches in um so that there's nothing to worry about and the next thing that i would do is apt install UFW, in case it's not already installed, it is not, so I'll add that because I want a firewall. And then I might go um, UFW default deny and uh, UFW enable. 
Now, here's the thing. Uh, if you're doing UFW enable like that with the default deny, that would block um, SSH. But because currently we're not using SSH, we're using Lish, it's not going to block anything. So I could still log out and log back in uh, with Lish there. If I wanted to add a port, open a port for SSH, I just go uh, UFW, uh, say limit, limit is actually better. Ooh, there's a little message came through. Um, so that's actually a message coming through saying UFW just blocked this. I don't really have to worry about them that much. Uh, but I've got, it does get in the way. Uh, limit, let's say, um, yeah. Well, actually, let's see. What's the destination port is? They look like random destination ports at the moment. It's kind of an interesting thing sometimes to log in and see how long it is before port 22 gets um, starts reaching a attacks. So sorry, uh, needed a space there. Um, but it's it's. Uh, Port 22 is a standard port for SSHing in, so it's one of the first ones that typically gets attacked. Um, remote desktop protocol is another one, gets attacked very, very quickly. You set up a server, I don't know, a couple of minutes, it's gonna people are going to start getting in. So one of the first things you're going to want to add is a firewall, um, a decent firewall. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. So this is where you would add your commands. Um, tell you what, I am going to end this video here and I will, uh, continue recording and, uh, though, and I will move on to part phase two, which is setting up SSH, because if you do SSH, you're not going to be getting this, um, stuff coming out on the, which comes up in the weblish terminal. Um, I typically don't use the weblish terminal, but it is the fastest and easiest way to get into, say, one of these things. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording on this video, and I'll see you again real soon for part two, uh, answering how do you actually get to a terminal. And then I might even continue beyond that to part three, installing Moodle. Why not? Okay, catch you later.